people need to stop blaming Erica Patterson for the acts of Darrell Brooks Jr. Welcome to the Everything Else channel here on YouTube, everythingelsechannel.com coming soon. At any point during this video, if you approve of it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, and please leave a comment down below. Your question or concern may be the subject of my next video. I think it's important for people to stop blaming Erica Patterson because of the meeting on November 21st in Waukesha. I believe, and this is up for debate, but I believe that Darrell Brooks Jr. was stalking Erica Patterson. I believe he was looking for her. I think that there's evidence to suggest it. I think that she was in the shelter. And I think that when she came out of the shelter, that Darrell was basically canvassing the streets looking for her. And when he found her, she decided to speak to him. When he called her, she decided to speak to him. Not because she wanted to. Again, I believe that Erica very much has suffered from battered wife syndrome. I believe that she has been the victim of this man for the entire life of her child. So what, 10, 15, 20 years. I believe she tried to get away from him. And I believe that she knew that he was in Waukesha looking for her. And maybe thought that if she spoke to him, whether on the phone or in person, maybe she would get some peace of mind. Maybe he would leave her alone. Maybe he would recognize the fact that she was in a shelter for a reason. That if she went missing, that they would call the authorities. Maybe because her friend was there, there would be a witness. There would be somebody. There was actually two witnesses because there was um, the guy and the girl that they would stand in the way of him taking her away, of, of him uh, hitting her with his car again, of him uh, maybe killing her. You know, I mean, this is a guy that killed six people and injured and maimed dozens of others and would have killed more. All 5,000 people were victims. All 5,000 people could have been struck, could have been killed. He was indiscriminate in who he harmed and who he killed. Men, women, children, old and young, white and black, tall and short, rich and poor. You know, it didn't matter. He was out to hurt people. And I think that a lot of people are looking for someone to blame. And Erica's not the someone to blame. She's been through so much. And, you know, the reason I'm making this video, the first video on the Everything Else channel, which is going to spend a lot of time talking about Darrell Brooks Jr. and the Waukesha trial, with the difference being that all of the videos that I did at the Sight Sounds Flavors YouTube channel, I'm not going to bring them over to this channel and republish them. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch them. And with the benefit of hindsight, knowing what I know now, I'm going to remake the videos with this perspective because this is a trial like the uh, Murdoch trial, like the Simpson trial. It's going to be a trial that we're going to be hearing a lot about in the future. And it's a trial that there's just, you know, Darrell Brooks is such a train wreck uh, of a defendant and uh, the trial was such a travesty in so many different regards, but it, it has had this ability to live on on Reddit, live on in uh, other social media platforms. People can't stop talking about it. Now, a lot of um, sovereign citizens also have decided that they uh, actually identify with Jarrell Brooks. They, they, they abhor the crime. They condemn the crime. They want nothing to do with the crime, but they think that some of the points that he drew off of the sovereign citizen lingo were actually correct. And I suspected that this was going to happen because we're dealing with a fringe group and they have never had the level of exposure to their doctrines that they had when Gerald Brooks was invoking them. I mean, nobody has ever uh, spent any kind of time uh, studying whether or not, uh, like for example, the state of Wisconsin had to be a living, breathing person. That's absurd. We all know that to be absurd. But they actually believe in that stuff. They believe that for there to be uh, a victim, there needs to be a living, breathing human being as a plaintiff. They don't believe in the concept of the state that represents living, breathing people as a litigant. And they don't recognize um, 
so many things that we that 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 ninety nine point nine percent of us recognize and know to be true, they don't uh, because they're nuts. Because 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 what they say, and I'm an attorney also, and I, I only bring that up because it, it's not even as if what they're saying conceptually is correct, theoretically is correct. It's not correct on any level, except in their minds. But the fact that Jarrell, you know, clung to it for dear life, literally, uh, has you know brought a lot of them out of the woodwork. And while they condemn him for the crime, they celebrate him for whatever level of understanding he may or may not have of their concepts. And so in that realm, this trial is going to live on and on. And then it's going to live on and on because of the sheer treachery of his acts and the lives he destroyed and the lives that are not coming back because of his actions. And it will live on because of that. And it will live on by the sheer stupidity of Darrell Brooks. Honor your oath and tacit agreement and rush to judgment, you know, his facial expressions, his gestures, his building a fortress out of boxes of evidence, all of that stuff, his hideous rap songs, his uh, divinity PhD grandma, his, his mom reading a cage bird, uh, him tormenting the witnesses, him battling the prosecutors on trivial matters, him attacking the judge, him being dragged away by the bailiffs, him talking about refusing to take COVID exams, all of these things. It, it, it's, it's a circus uh, that, that also has a backdrop of a lot of pain and suffering. And um, people just can't stop talking about it. And memes are everywhere. But the one thing that I really would like to strongly, strongly discourage people from doing is blaming Erica Patterson. Because like I said, I believe he was stalking her. I believe he was in Waukesha because he thought she was there. I believe he was scanning the streets because he was looking for her. I believe that when he spoke to her on the phone and when he spoke to her in person, she may have acquiesced only to get rid of him. And she called the police or the police was called on her behalf. And the fact that the police had to leave because of what he did, uh, you know, it, it, she, there's nothing she could have done. I mean, he ran her over. He attacked her. And whether or not he actually sold her, he implied that he sold women on at least one video that I've seen. And his rap songs uh, speak of women in a way that doesn't leave much to the imagination with regards to how he may have treated Erica. And you look at the enjoyment that he, that he, he derived from putting her on the stand and how he questioned her, how he looked at her, how he went out of his way to try to make her look like a bad mom with the two photos and, and, and so many other examples. And you see somebody who, uh, almost akin to when serial killers, uh, you know, talk about the murders that they committed. They relive them in a way and they enjoy it because they're psychopaths. And we saw that when he questioned Erica. And we saw it when he wanted as much time as possible to question her. And he wasn't even questioning her about anything that would help him with his case. He was questioning her about things that hurt her, that were irrelevant to the case. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people have sort of mixed feelings about Judge Doro and even about the prosecution who didn't object to a lot of the questions only because they... They knew that this guy didn't have a leg to stand on. They knew that his guilty uh, verdict was a foregone conclusion. So they just kind of gave him a little bit of leeway. But by giving him a little bit of leeway, they were subjecting Erica to more torment and more trauma. And so I don't agree with them having done that. But I, what I will say, though, is that nobody can blame Erica Patterson for the acts of Darrell Brooks Jr., and nobody should. And I wanted to start the Everything Else channel uh, and my discussions of the Waukesha trial with this video because I feel it is necessary. I feel that her interview uh, that she did, uh, I forget the name of the gentleman, but it, here on YouTube was a good interview, but uh, a lot of people felt like it could have been better. And, you know, I do interviews and, and uh, the Norman Nick show. And I thought Norman did a good job, but a lot of people say that, that you know, there was a lot more that should have come out and, and, and maybe a lot more will come out. 
But uh, at the end of the day, Erica is as much a victim as anyone else. And there is nothing she could have done to have stopped what happened on November 22nd. There's no way she would have known what was going to happen on November 22nd. And I think very much so. I'm not in any way, shape, or form uh, a mental health therapist or uh, anything of the sort. But, uh, but for whatever it's worth, I do believe that Erica suffered and continues to suffer from battered wife syndrome and, uh, and needs to get a lot of help and uh, is not going to see the light at the end of the tunnel for a long, long time because of all the emotional and physical abuse that Jarrell Brooks Jr. put her through. And a lot of these comments and reddits and message boards and videos blaming her, whether directly, indirectly, uh, are not helping one bit. And I hope they stop.